Hello everyone, my name is Dr. John Shetling. I am from uh, FKAE. So I am a lecturer of the Digital Signal Processing BEB 30503. In this uh, subject, Digital Signal Processing, there are five chapters. You may refer to the RPP for the details. Chapter 1 is the signal and system. What do you know about signal? Signal can be natural and man-made. For example, variation of the air pressure when we speak, daily temperatures and the periodic electrical signals generated by the heart. And signal also represents information and is strongly related to the waveform. It contains information about the behavior of the phenomena. Also, signal may not convey any required information directly and may not free from the disturbance. Okay, means that there's a noise. So you need to convert the signal to electrical form for processing. Next, review what is uh, analog signal and digital signal. Okay, analog signal is uh, one of the signal. It's a continuous with time and not and no continuity in the signal. Whereas the digital signals is a signal that represents a sequence of discrete value. Actually, the analog signal, uh, this subject you have studied in the signal and system. Okay, In the previous uh, second year, second semester, you have studied the analog and uh, uh, you have, the, you have studied signal and system, this subject. So that one is the continuous signals. So in this semester, you will study the digital signal means that it's a discrete signal. Okay, basically it's the same, but one is continuous and another one is the digital. After you know the analog signal and digital signal, so what is the signal processing? So signal processing is an area of electrical engineering system engineering and applied mathematics that deal with the operation on analysis of signal. So it is either discrete or continuous time to perform useful operation on those signal. So for example, of the analog uh, signal processing is the voltage, the current, and electric charge. So that is the analog signal processing. So And then what about the digital signal processing? In digital signal processing, it is concerned with the representation of the signals by a sequence of numbers or symbols and the processing of these uh, signals. So the goal of this uh, digital signal processing is to measure the continuous real-world analog signal. Then convert the signal from the analog to digital by using the ADC, the analog to digital converter. And then require the required output signal is another analog output signal, which need the digital analog converter, okay, DAC. Since you are an E and E student, you must know how the signal processing affect our daily life. So signal processing touch our daily life in more ways than we realize. There are countless applications and devices that utilize signal processing to make our technology work. So uh, this is the website that you can uh, check on this website and see what is the, uh, the application of this signal processing. Signal processing is uh, being widely used in a different applications in which requiring the uh, image signal processing is, uh, is from the low-end application to the ultra-high-end applications. So for low-end application for VGA, uh, it can be used in the smartphone, toy camera, in which there is a low uh, megapixel is required, and the medical camera. And then uh, signal processing also used in the uh, mid-end application, which is about 5 megapixels. Also in the uh, smartphone, the PC camera, dashboard camera, or the console game camera. And uh, 
In high-end applications, which is about 5 megapixel to 13 megapixels, so this is a better quality okay, of the uh, photo. There is a smartphone cameras in tablet cameras or a camera recorder or drawn a camera. Okay, so the security camera. And then for the ultra high-end application, which is above 16 megapixel, also in smartphone. So it depends on the megapixels and digital still cameras. So you have a, a lot of the different application can be used. There are since there are a lot of applications, but why choose digital? Because in digital it's easy to analyze using the computer. And it's an efficient way, efficient way of storing uh, data you may store in the CD. And easy to simulate is cheap and safe, and easy to maintain, which is quick and low cost. Compared in size, okay, micro P are small in the size, robust. So robust is stable in the presence of noise. Okay, and system also can work better in digital signal. In terms of element of the digital signal processing system, for the analog signal processing, it's easy. Means that uh, for analog signal processor, you just need an analog input signal to produce an analog output signal. But for digital signal processing, you need to pass through a, a process to get a digital input signal. Such that uh, the input is in analog input signal, you need to pass through a Nyquist filter and then the sampling process and then convert the analog signal to a digital converter. So after this, after A to D converter, you will get a digital input signal. So this digital input signal will pass through a digital signal processing. So after this, you will get a digital output signal. So digital output signals will be converted to a, using a digital to analog converter to get an analog output signal. So this is the difference between the analog input processing and digital signal analog uh, signal processing and the digital signal processing. Advantages of the digital signal processing over the analog signal processing. So uh, the first one is a reconfiguration, uh, the system operation in which the digital signal processing is more flexible and uh, more accuracy because more accurate in terms of control much better to control and in terms of signal processing is allowed the implementation of a more sophisticated algorithm of course and the cost is cheaper for the analog signal processing um, the verification need, use, need to use the hardware and it is difficult to control because of the tolerance and difficult to perform the precise mathematical operation. So on top of that, the cost is expensive. So this is the difference between the DSP and ASP. So next we will go to the, uh, this, what is discrete signals. Digital signal is a continuous signal, whereas a discrete signal is a non-continuous signal. The discrete time signal can be obtained via a sampling process from a continuous time signal. So the sampling process is corresponding to a uniformly spaced in time uh, domain. And discrete signals is always denoted as uh, Xn and it involves the uh, it involves the approximating the it involves approximating the sampling samples analog value using a finite set of uh, values. So after this step, the output signal is discrete in both time and amplitude. And Xn is plot as line again the index of n. This figure shows the comparison between the continuous time and the discrete time signal. The first step of this digitization is to sample the 
analog signal. So output of this process is a discrete time signal. So at this point, there is no constraint on the amplitude of the output signal. The next step of the digitization process is the quantization. So from here, you can see that the continuous time signal is a continuous. Okay, it's continuous signal. For the discrete time signal, it's a, it's a continuous also, but it's discrete in time. It follows the shape of the continuous time signal. You see that it's follow the, the shape of the continuous time. Okay. And uniformly spaced. Okay, uniformly spaced. So this is called discrete time signal. Next is the signal representation. Signal um, in a signal, t is a, at the origin, which is t equals 0, and correspond to n equals 0. So usually you will see a marker here, and this marker indicates the origin. So if you look at the, this is the example, if you look at the xn equal to in the bracket 1, 2, 4, and 8. So this means that the marker here, this is t equals 0 here. So t equals 0, this is negative, negative 1, this is negative 2. And then this is positive 1. The ellipse, did, the, the dot did not start infinite as 10 on either side. Next is the type of the signal. Okay, for the left-sided, okay, so left-sided signal, okay, uh, xn is called left-sided if it's 0 for n less than capital N. So, the left-sided means that the, the signal at the right-sided only, and uh, left-sided only. For right-sided, the signal only for uh, 0 for n less than capital N. So for right-sided. And then for causal, 0 for n less than 0. Causal. Okay, so it's causal. And then anti-causal, so 0 for n more than or equal 0. So this is the anti-causal. Periodic signal. A discrete signal, a discrete periodic signal, repeat every n sample is described by this. So this is periodic signal. You know what is do you know what is periodic signal? Okay, periodic signal means that the signal is can be repeat again at a certain amount of time. Okay. So it repeat every n sample, this one. And the measurement of signals can be in energy and power. So for non-periodic signal, the signal energy is a useful measure. So it's defined as summation of uh, n equal to negative infinity to infinity uh, modulus x n squared. Okay. For the energy, the measure of the periodic signal are based on the average because the signal energy is infinity. So for non for non periodic for non periodic signal we uh, measure the energy signal. For periodic signal we measure the power signal. So that's the difference between the energy and the power. Okay. So uh, for average value, x average, or we have uh, average sum of the period, you have the x average equal to 1 over n, summation from 0 to n minus 1 xn. For signal power, it's average energy per period. It's, uh, the formula is 1 over n, summation of modulus square. So here we can say that signal with finite energy are called energy signal, and signal with finite power we call power signal, and all the periodic signal are the power signals. Now let's look at the example. Calculate the energy in the signal 
uh, xn equal to 3 in the bracket of 0 0.5 power of n for n more than or equal to 0. Okay, how to do this? Okay, first of all, we'll, in this question, you need to find the energy. So you need to know what is the formula for the energy signals, energy, uh, how to calculate the energy, what is the formula. Okay, uh, for the energy is the summation of x n squared. So the x n is 3, 0 0.5 power of n. So uh, energy, uh, the formula of energy is x squared, s n squared. So you have a uh, 3, 0 0.5 power of n squared. When you square, you get 9, 0 0.25 power of n. Okay, in order to solve this one, the you have a bet, summation of beta n is equal to 1 over 1 minus beta. Okay, if you compare with this one, beta is 0 0.25. So you, sum, you substitute into this formula. So you have 9 over 1 minus 0 0.5. And then you get 12 joule. Now look at the let's look at the another example. Periodic signal is xn equal to 6 cos 2 pi n over 4. Then given n equal to 4, find the average value and signal power. Okay, so if you look at here, the question given is the n equal to 4. And xn is 6 cos 2 pi n over 4. So as you know, So you know that the given question is xn 6 cos 2 pi n over 4. So you substitute the value of uh, n. Okay, you substitute the value of n. So you 6 cos for x1, where n equal to 0, uh, x1n is 6 cos 2 pi n. So n equal to 0 first. Start with 0, divide by 4. So what is the answer? It's 6. Okay, and then n equal to 1, and then 6 cos 2 pi n, then n equal to 1. So when you start with n equal 0 to, uh, to 3, so total is n equal to 4, You what is the answer? So xn, okay, x0, uh, x1, x2, and x3. Okay, so when n equal to 0, x1n is 6. So n equal to 1, uh, x1, 1 is 0. So when n equal to 2, x1, 2 is equal to negative 6 because you substitute the n value equal to 2. So when n equal to 3, you substitute the value of 3, you have 6 cos 2 pi n 3, 2 pi 3 over 4, you get 0. And then the answer is, the xn is 6, 0, negative 6, 0. Okay, where should you put your uh, symbol of uh, t equals 0? If you look at here, n equals 0, so when t equals 0, you should put the indicates of the symbol here. This is the symbol, okay? The origin symbol. You should put the origin symbol at n equals 0. Also, the question require you to find the average value and the signal power. And you know that the average value is for the power is 1 over n summation x1n. So 1 over n since the n equal to 4, so 1 over 4, this, uh, the summation of x1n, so x1n is this value. So 6 plus 0 plus negative 6 plus 0, you get 0. And then the signal power p is 1 over rare n summation the modulus xn square so you square off you square all this value so only you have these two value right so 6 power of 2 and in the bracket negative 6 power of 2 you get 18 what so that's all for the classification and analysis of the discrete signals thank you for watching